when I worked uh, at a movie theater, one of the big perks was that they would let me take all the leftover popcorn home. Yep. So I had uh, three or four roommates, uh, depending on when uh, during my tenure working for a theater in college. Uh, and I would bring home the, the bags of popcorn and they would get eaten. <laughs> All the roommates would, would help themselves. I think a couple of them might have been dependent. If I didn't bring home the popcorn, they <laughs> they weren't eating. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a good perk. I honestly like that's why I was like, it's all about the spin. Cause like when I, when I would speak about that, I would, I, one of the perks was free movies, right? Like I, you just get, I, I would go to like, I was, you know, you're broke in college. Like I would just, I would use that free movies <laughs> all of the time <laughs> and like take my friends. And so I just had such, you know, and I know that's film, not books, of course, but stories are stories. And so I think, yeah, that was a really good perk too. Just getting to like watch all these movies for free. It sounds like uh, if somebody gets an interview and is like, okay, well, I'm going to interview with Root Literary uh, next Friday. Between now and Friday, what you should be doing is reading books and uh, that, 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 that they've represented that are similar to what you're going to be working on. Have that ready to go when you get in. But mm -hmm. I think that if you come in and you say, I love stories, I don't know why it would be an advantage for people to say, well, I love books and only books and I'm completely unaware of this other part of my culture that makes up such a uh, huge part of what's going to be um, influencing authors, publishers and everybody else, right? No, it's so true. Like um, stories are stories and so much of like the the beats to a novel do mirror, you know, often the beats of a film. I mean, so many people use that, like save the cat beat sheet, which was originally for screenplays, of course. So like it does translate to novels fairly well. Um, but yeah, no, I think stories are stories. And honestly, like specifically, like, you know, I can't speak to like the publisher side of things, but for agents, so much of our job is just selling things. So like, if you can be like, you know, here's this elevator pitch for this movie that I've watched. It's like, okay, well, that's, that's a log line. Like you, that's what we're going to be doing at the agency. We're going to be pitching books. And it's when you get on the phone and you're like talking to an editor, like being able to distill like the essence of a story into a log line, into an elevator pitch is a great skill. Um, and what else was I going to say? Um, Oh yeah. And then like, you know, being on the agency side, so much of it is just exploiting rights. And so we do have like film and TV rights associated with books. And if you, you know, know a lot about the film and TV side of things, being able to be like that, like that book will translate really well to the screen and has that kind of cinematic scope. That may be like a secret power of like knowing, you know, what's effective. In, in adapting to the screen, so. Oh, something I um, find to be true. And um, what I'll talk to my students when I teach writing workshops about, I'll, I'll tell them that we're gonna use some film examples, not because watching movies is a, an appropriate substitute for reading. Your writers, for the love of God, get out there and read. But you can watch a lot more movies than you can read books when the same amount of time. It's just it's a bigger investment of, of time to, to read a book. Mm -hmm. um, but so so worth it. Uh, but um, that translates to, well, more people will be familiar with the story and, and the characters within the story we're going to be discussing if we go with a movie that you're more likely to have seen. And I assume that's true when you're pitching and you're trying to find uh, comparable titles. If one of those could be a movie or a TV show, that's a greater shot of, of, of roping in more people, getting more people on board uh, when you're trying to, to sell, not just the editor you're pitching to, but whoever they've got to go and pitch to, right? Yeah, no, I, you know, I've actually had people ask me that before, like, can I use a film or a TV show as a comp? Um, and hey, like every agent will always have like strong opinions about things like one way or the other, like someone will be like, no, that's unacceptable. <laughs> but, but um, for my part, like, I, yeah, I've seen that done many times. And I think if all of your comps are films and TV shows, probably not a great idea, because, you know, then it, then it doesn't necessarily demonstrate your market awareness on the book side, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, sometimes there's just like a movie that, you know, so many people have seen, or if they haven't seen, they've likely heard about it and it's just the perfect like match and it might make more sense to go with that. Um, of course you always sometimes get in a tricky position if it's like, you know, something well-known, but only to like a, I don't know, like I love Fleabag for instance, um, on that Netflix, I think it's Netflix, um, with, um, it's set in the UK and like, 
I would love to use that as a comp, but I could see some people being like, what now? Like I've never watched that. And so, (laughs) and so you're always like risking that you're getting too niche and like going with a comp that's well-known in certain circles, (laughs) but maybe not as well-known outside of those circles. (laughs) So, yeah. Well, I mean, if there's enough overlap between the TV show and the the particular niche market that you're hoping to get uh, the book uh, marketed to, that that could be helpful, right? Yeah, exactly. So, and honestly, like the editors are always going to go research and do their own kind, like do their own comp research, anyways. And the comps that they bring to like an acquisitions meeting or like an editorial meeting may not even be the ones that your agent put in the pitch, anyways, because you know, they might be like, oh, well, you know, you didn't think to put this in your pitch, but, but in like in house, we have this book that came out, you know, a couple of years ago, that's actually a great comp. And because it's their book and they, they, they know what the sales were, you know, their team's aware of it. Maybe that's the comp that they go with instead to, for like proof of concept. Right. And like this, this can work because it has worked and we know how to make it work. So I think comps are important, but I also think like sometimes like they're extremely important for editors and like putting their like budget together and all of that. But from the author agent side, sometimes I'm like, we can get a little too in the weeds. Like we don't even know if we'll go with that comp, you know? So, 